right, let's get him on the video. See how close we can get to the squirrel. Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. There he goes, there he goes. Doom, doom, doom. Normally they just fly right up a tree. That's why I never get them on the video. But this little guy seems to be cooperating, huh? Squirrel. All right, there he goes. Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. August 27th, 2024. Let's get into it. Moment, let's agree on one thing. There is no scenario where the president of the United States can't head up a press conference. Under mm -hmm. any scenario, every president, every president has been able to address the press and in the good times and the bad times. She has to start talking to the press. Period. There's no optionality. There's no scenario where anybody would be comfortable, particularly in the swing states where swing voters are thinking to myself, what do we got here? Why won't she talk to the press? I'm asking it from a policy guy. I, got, I need explanations for these policies. I have to invest on these policies. I, need, I have questions and I don't get any answers. I'm not being unreasonable. Come out, come out wherever you are and talk. First thing I wanted to talk about was I'm... <laughs> Maybe a correction. I don't know. I'd have to watch yesterday's video again. Yes, I do watch my videos. Call me narcissistic. But I always want to make sure that I didn't say something incredibly stupid. <laughs> I mean, already I'm, I'm sure I'm in trouble with the deep state, but uh, I don't need the FBI banging down my door because of uh, something I said that was uh, could be interpreted as hate speech. Although I'm not sure what hate speech is or misinformation. Uh, they, it seems like these days, the only thing we get is misinformation, right? <laughs> All right, so the first story was uh, that I thought was crazy. Uh, this is uh, Merrick Garland. Now, if you want to know that you have a Congress by and for the deep state, this is him lying to Tom Cotton. Let's watch that video first thing. Example after example of this administration coordinated, apparently, according to a federal court, by your agency, pressuring, coercing social media companies to engage in censorship. Is that constitutional? That is unequivocally false. Is what the emails show? It is unequivocally false, Senator. You are not pressuring the big tech companies to take down accounts. You are not meeting with them to ask them to censor on your behalf. That is correct. We are not. Mr. Secretary, it has been established for years in this country, as you very well know, because you're a lawyer, that the federal government may not use private third parties to engage in activities that are unconstitutional. That's exactly what you and this administration are doing. You are leveraging private companies to carry out censorship on your behalf. It's dystopian, but worse than that, it's unconstitutional. It's also false. All right, so that's him lying to Tom Cotton, all right? Now, shouldn't he be in jail? Oh, shit, you're not going to believe this. We got a turtle coming up. Can't believe it. All right, let's get, the, let's get the camera on the turtle. We'll talk about that in a minute. There he is. Check him out. We're scaring him just a little bit. Hey there, little turtle. How you doing? Yeah. Boy, I tell you, I, I've never seen so many turtles along this trail as we have when I walk it occasionally. But anyway, so uh, in addition to that, the reason that I was showing you that lying bastard that should be in jail, just like Fauci should be in jail, was, uh, and, it, and that's why I tell you Congress, you know, right now they could send the sergeant of arms and arrest him. He's not supposed to be able to lie to Congress. In fact, if I lied to Congress, I guarantee you I'd be breaking rocks in Leavenworth or wherever they want, whatever jail, I'd probably be in there with the January 6th prisoners. And that's the double standard that we have in this country right now. But anyway, the, the story is Zuckerberg came out. I don't know what's going on. Maybe he found a conscience. But he came out and said, yeah, at the behest of the FBI and the Biden administration that uh, he uh, censored people off of Facebook, booted them right off. Uh, he uh, suppressed the Hunter Biden laptop story at their request. I mean, this is a hell of a revelation. It's all over X right now. And uh, why in the world would he admit this? You know, and of course, a lot of people are calling for him to go to jail. I disagree. You know, that's a lot of pressure. I mean, when you think about it, even if you're a multi billionaire, I mean, you got to respect Elon. But right now, if Elon landed in France, I dare say he'd be in jail. 
So I understand where Zuckerberg was coming from to a certain degree. Now him putting, him cheating in the election or helping the Democrats cheat in the 2020 election, I don't think that was right. Now that, that would be an offense for him to go to jail. But for him to just come out and say, look, you know, I'm going to admit this. That's just a, that's just a thing of conscience. Now I think Zuckerberg may have lied to Congress, but uh, the other, the whole, the other bad part that he could get sued for, you know, and I, and I'll tell you this, a lot of people have invested a lot of time in Facebook for their businesses. Okay, like uh, there's a restaurant called the Damn Restaurant down on uh, 484C, and uh, yeah, I don't understand it, but they, that's all they got for for advertising on the internet is they have a Facebook page and and they maintain it and that's where they interact with a lot of their customers well imagine if you're a conservative and you got booted off of Facebook that was uh, I mean that's I mean let's just take an example in my my case I put up a website back when I published my book it took me I'd say a month or two because I'd never done a website and I did it the right way I, well at first I did it with WordPress and I got hacked so I had to take that down. A buddy of mine said, oh man, don't use WordPress to put up a website. So I wasted all that time. So then I found out about Joomla. And, you know, I still want to play with it. This was back in Joomla 3. You know, Joomla 4 is out now. And uh, so I want to put up, and I still maintain my domain. And I still got uh, storage at Cloud Access up in Michigan. So one of these days I will put up a website for you guys. Especially if uh, my book doesn't come out on the Our Country, Our Choice uh, market marketplace, which they're supposed to was supposed to go up August 28th, so it could be tomorrow. You never know. But anyway, the lawsuit would be that. Imagine how much business he caught. You know, he might have put these businesses out of business by taking them down if he took down any business web pages, right? So that's a hell of an omission, and uh, that was a crazy story. The next story is uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, there was an old video, if I can find it, of her endorsing Biden way back in the day. And a lot of people are saying, you know, don't trust her, don't trust her. Well, you know, that's not true. I mean, let's, let's think about it. I, I remember back when Obama was running. Now, I voted for McCain, even though now I find out McCain was as bad or worse than Obama. <laughs> I should have been voting for the libertarian candidate, right? But uh, anyway... Uh, so, but at the time, I thought, well, you know, Obama, he'd probably be okay. Worst president ever, next to Biden. I mean, he destroyed the United States. And so, I'm just telling you how I came around. And, this, and so, Tulsi, it's okay if she uh, was, because she was a Democrat, right? I mean, so what if she endorsed Biden? She came around to the, to the, to the rebel alliance, right? I mean, you know, she was serving the empire, just kind of like I was. I just was oblivious back then. I was more worried about my book and cybersecurity than I was about geopolitics. So anyway, let's watch a couple of videos of uh, Tulsi. One thing that ran through my mind as I was there joining President Trump and honoring the ultimate sacrifice that these 13 service members paid, uh, sharing the sorrow that these Gold Star families still feel uh, and will always feel at the loss of their loved ones Meanwhile, where is Kamala Harris? Where is Joe Biden? Well, Joe Biden's on vacation and Kamala Harris is running a, a, a campaign based on joy and vibes and laughing her way around. I can tell you who wasn't laughing were those families, the, some of the survivors of that attack in this disastrous Afghanistan withdrawal. This is personal for me, Judge, and, and so many other Americans who know firsthand the cost of war. We've seen and experienced it Firsthand, we know how important it is to have a commander in chief who values every single one of our lives and who has the strength and the courage to, to exercise all means of diplomacy, meeting with dictators, allies, adversaries, partners in the pursuit of peace, recognizing that war is, is always uh, and should always be a last resort. I endorse President Trump today because he has those qualities and he's proven that he is that commander in chief. Kamala Harris has proven she is not. 
We are closer to the brink of nuclear war now than ever before, Never. closer to World War III because of Harris and Biden and their policies. You know, uh, Chelsea, a, uh, a mother of uh, one of the slain troops spoke out against Kamala Harris today. Take a listen. Vice President Harris is now running to be commander in chief. I wonder, do you have a message for her? You are with the whole administration in all of this. You hold the same accountability as President Biden does. You were right beside him in making these decisions. This administration has tried to sweep it under the rug, and that's absolutely not going to work for this nation. You know, Tulsi, your response to that? You know, I, I want to know if Kamala Harris has personally called every one of these 13 families yep. and the families of those who came home injured. There was a triple amputee there today, there to honor the loss of his brothers and sisters. Has she called them to apologize, to apologize for the decision that they made that resulted in this disastrous withdrawal and, and an explosion and an attack that took these 13 service members' lives that was completely preventable? Kamala Harris is completely unfit to serve as our commander in chief. Voters, regardless of whether you're Democrats or Republicans, need to know that truth because that's really what this election is about, Judge. It's not about Democrats versus Republicans. Right. It's about having a president who stands for freedom, peace, and prosperity, which is Donald Trump, versus having a president in Kamala Harris who, who attacks our freedoms and censors us and uses political retaliation, who has pushed us to the brink of war, and who's, who's, who's created this economic hardship for Americans across the country. That's really the choice that we have before us. And for me, as a service member, as a veteran, it's a very clear choice. I love our country, I cherish peace and freedom, and I'm supporting Donald Trump in this election so that he can be our commander in chief once again. You know, it's interesting, Tulsi, CNN today tried to attack Trump for attending the wreath ceremony. Take a listen. Is he politicizing these soldiers' deaths? Should he even be at Arlington National Cemetery if he's going to uh, make uh, some politics out of this? I just look at President Biden, uh, under whose leadership we actually ended and made the tough decision to end our nation's longest war. That was the right decision by President Biden. Uh, you know, I, I guess the question, Tulsi, should have been, why wasn't Biden in attendance as well? But I want to ask you, just four years ago, you were one of many Democrats running against uh, Dem uh, Donald Trump. Today, you endorse Trump. Why? The, like I said, uh, I've just made the case, the choice in this election is very clear. And I'm confident that if elected as president again, Donald Trump, he has the strength and the backbone to stand up to the military industrial complex and keep us out of these unnecessary wars of choice. Uh, I want to point back to that, that clip you just played. Let's remember that Joe Biden on that debate stage did not even remember mm -hmm. that his decision resulted in the deaths of 13 of my brothers and sisters in uniform. Donald Trump this morning, he didn't have a big crowd out there at Arlington Cemetery. It was him standing and grieving with these Gold Star families for hours. This wasn't just a drive-by photo op. He stayed with them for hours and helped to console them and thank them for their sacrifice that they have made for our great country. Was it, was it emotional for the president? It was extremely emotional. It was extremely emotional for, for everyone who was there. It was groups of, of loved ones and family and friends. It was two survivors who were there at that yeah. attack at Abbey Gate in Kabul who came back, who were seriously injured now for the rest of their lives. It was such a powerful, powerful day. I'm grateful to have been there to offer my own sincere gratitude for their service and sacrifice. But it's so important that we have leaders who do this, who mm -hmm. not just do it for a photo op, but actually express as President Trump did this morning. I saw it, I felt it, I experienced it. Mm -hmm. The sorrow that he felt for the great loss that not only these families have felt, but our country endures. If you really look at what's happening in the Democratic Party today, it's a party that the word demos in Greek means people. But it's a party that's lost faith in the people. It's a party that needs ironclad control. So they didn't trust anybody during to have a real election. They got rid of the primaries because they didn't trust the people. They then picked, handpicked Vice President Harris with no election, no even pretense of election, because they didn't trust the people. And you know, you have, and they're, they're the party now of censorship. 
And how can you have a democracy with censorship? You cannot have a democracy. They're absolutely incompatible. And everybody knew that everybody, you know, you and I were raised reading Orwell and Alice Huxley and, um, and, you know, Robert Heinlein and Alexander Solzhenitsyn and, and, uh, and all of these other books that were part of classical literature that was taught in every American classroom. It said the first step to totalitarianism is always begins with censorship. It's the first step to end that slippery slope. And there's no time that we look back in history and say the people who were censoring speech were the good guys. All right, so that's, that's all I got on that. Now, if you recall yesterday, I did a story on the, uh, the weaponized uh, Bill Gates mosquitoes from uh, Mark, what is it, Mike Wallace. Anyway, I didn't post up the video that he showed uh, that was supporting that claim. So let's, uh, let's watch that video now of uh, his, I don't know where he got this video and I have no idea what it means. <laughs> so take it with a grain of salt. Like I said, conspiracy theory, right? All right, here's that video. Okay, so there's that. All right, and, and then I've heard nothing about, you know, because I was talking about the, uh, what was it? I think it was eight tankers that were supposedly were blown up in, in, in Iran, the Iran-Iraq border. But I'm telling you, if that's a true story, I can't, I haven't been able to find anything anywhere about that incident. And, you know, I sift through Al Jazeera and I sift through uh, RT yeah, it's because that's where I get a lot of my news because you can't get any news out of the mainstream media. And, of course, YouTube, I, you know, the other YouTubers. And so nobody's talking about that. So I, I'm not sure if that's a true story or not. So uh, just take it. If I find some evidence, I'll tack on to the end of this video because I'll be going home. By the way, I'm out hiking again. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, you know, I, when you're handicapped, you know, when you feel good, you got to take advantage of it. And... I woke up, usually after a day of hiking like I had yesterday, I get home and the next day I just can't do anything. I just lounge around in a chair. That's why I only put up a video about every other day because I just I just don't have the energy. But I don't know, I don't know what happened. I woke up this morning. I was like, damn, I feel good. I feel good. Da, 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 da. So I said, well, hell, let's go, go out and make a video. I said, all right. I, so I can't believe it. And then I, I dropped off some cans one thing I did want to say, though, oh, the next story, gosh, gosh darn it, I got to get into this one. So, you know, I spent a lot of my life in Michigan, and I knew that Wayne County was corrupt as hell, but I did not know how corrupt the rest of the state was, especially the, the state government. Of course, you know, we went through various governors. I mean, good Lord, think about Granholm. She was our governor for a while, and what she's done with the Biden administration is lie, lie, lie. I mean, you know, at the time, I didn't, I didn't know what a terrible governor she was. Uh, and uh, anyway, so you got, you know, that idiot Whitmer. You know, I don't think she got elected. I think they cheated her in there. But anyway, this is uh, the story bouncing around. The Secretary of State, or the uh, the, the election official, I don't know if that's if sec that Secretary of State is the right term, has, uh, you know, because Kennedy asked to be taken off the ballot. And she said, no, she's keeping him on the ballot. I guess she figures that you know, him on the ballot will damage the Trump in the election somehow. And then there's some other stories about how she's, uh, she said, oh, they can't um, contest the election. If anybody contests the election, they're going to jail. Uh, if someone were to violate the law and not certify the election at the local level, we will come for you. So any local certifier thinking of skirting the law and not certifying the vote, don't even think about it because we'll get uh, If someone were to violate the law and not certify the election at the local level, we will come for you. So any local certifier thinking of skirting the law and not certifying the vote, don't even think about it because we'll get If you contest the election, so let's say that you're in Detroit 
And, you know, there, the same thing happens like in 2020, where all the Republicans get kicked out of the room, and then they put paper over the windows, and they're standing outside crying to the police saying, look, they just booted us out, man. They're cheating in there. They're running ballots through the machines, and they won't let us in to even look at them, which is exactly what happened. And, uh, you know, and so then afterwards, they want to take a, a lawsuit and say, look, look at what happened. These people should be in jail for, for election interference. And then they go to jail because the Secretary of State said you can't contest the election. I mean, it's the craziest story I've ever heard in my lifetime. Uh, so that's kind of the three big stories or four or five or whatever. Like the story, you know, about uh, that the Belgrade Guard. Uh, by the way, I, I quoted the, the incorrect number on the number of people that were killed there. But it was, it was in the video yesterday. I, I want to say it was just a few, and then there were injuries, and, uh, you know, because it was attacked with the HIMARS. So, and then, of course, if I can get the name of that, I was find a post on the name of that uh, city, because this is, this is a big deal in the Donbass. If the Russians take this city, uh, this is bigger than Bakhmut, or bigger than uh, that other town, because this, this is the logistics hub of, uh, of the Donbass, and you might as well just kiss the Ukrainians goodbye if, if the Russians take that city, which it looks like they are. And then I, there's also a post about uh, how in southern Ukraine, uh, if I find that, I'll, I'll put it up. But uh, they're, they're meeting no resistance. The, the Russians are just advancing forward. And there's no, and, you know, and, and through small towns, you know, not, no big cities or anything. And they're saying there's no Ukrainians there, that they've all been withdrawn. And so they're just kind of marching forward. I mean, you can only go so fast. People don't understand military warfare, you know. They say, well, if there's no resistance, why don't they just go on to the Kiev and end the war? Well, you got a logistic problem, and there's always the threat of counterattack. So let's say those troops have been withdrawn, although with the surveillance, I can't believe they could surprise the Russians, but, or, you know, in modern times. But anyway, uh, you know, so you, get, you can't outrun your logistics. So as the Russians advance, they have to also advance their logistics, which is a buildup of infrastructure. So it's a it's a slow moving process to to you keep the, uh, the you know that, that many when you've got 800. Imagine feeding 800,000 people. How long would you sit in your kitchen <laughs> cooking cooking food for 800,000 people three times a day? You know, so you, that's a huge plus all the fuel and the ammunition and the uh, the air cover and the planning. So even though the Russians have nobody in front of them, it's still going to take a while for them to advance to the Dnieper River. So we'll see. Uh, but I do think they'll be at the Dnieper a lot sooner than we thought, especially with the Kursk, when, they, when Ukraine threw the Hail Mary with the uh, Battle of the Bulge there. So anyway, I gave you the numbers on that yesterday about how much, uh, how much equipment and personnel the Ukrainians had lost already. It was about half. And I think the Russians are wiping out what's left. And from what I understand, they've cut them off. They can't, they can't retreat back into Ukraine. So they got them bottled up in there, and they're just going to wipe them out. That's 11,000 troops gone. What, in a month, about two months? Unbelievable. Like, the amount of death in this war is beyond my imagination. I mean, I think we're looking at a million 1.2 million dead Ukrainians that in casualties probably upwards of 3 million, you know in Gaza you got uh, two two million potentially dead uh, Palestinians uh, God knows how many Israelis have been killed. I mean Hamas has been putting up a hell of a fight whether you uh, You're for them or against them uh, And then of course you got Hezbollah shooting rockets in but the, mostly they're just hitting uh, Buildings and targets, you know military targets. I don't think there's been too much death associated with Hezbollah and then of course we've got Iran still hanging out there we don't know if they're gonna strike or not forgot one more thing I, I wanted to talk about was uh, I don't know if you can see behind me but I've got my umbrella strapped on because the best job in the world would be to be a weatherman <laughs> in Florida because <laughs> they never get the weather right it could be a 20% chance of rain and I'm gonna tell you when I get out on the trail it's pouring down, you know, so 
unfortunately, at this time of the year, I have to just walk the paved trails. I was going to go in the woods today, but supposedly there's a 50% chance of rain. Well, 50% usually means you're going to get rain at some point. Hadn't been a drop of rain today. <laughs> so so I, I imagine having a job where you can be wrong uh, 60, 70% of the time and be, only be right about, you know, 30 to 40% of the time. That'd be a great job to have, wouldn't it? Just saying. In all my days hiking, I've never seen this before. There's a raccoon right up there in that tree. Can you see him? He's eyeballing me. He's just climbing a tree. Look at that little guy. Let's see how close we can get. There he goes, he's going up. See him? Am I getting him on the video? I hope I am. Look at him, he's looking down. Cute little guy, aren't they? Mean little bastards. Uh, oh well, I guess we've seen enough. All right, forgot another story. So, isn't Mitch McConnell from, is it Kentucky? I don't know how fair the elections, we already know that they cheat like hell in Michigan. And that's how Whitmore got elected. I don't think she was elected by the populace. I think she was elected by cheating Democrats, uh, putting ballots in there. Uh, but I, I mean, it could be the same for McConnell. But McConnell has come out against the uh, SAVE Act. Uh, you know, Kentucky, all right, you got to vote that POS out, man. That freaking old fart. Get rid of his dumb ass. Will you please, God, get rid of Mitch McConnell. I mean, if all of you vote against him, I mean, it's, he can't be reelected. Hell, he's so damn old, maybe, I mean, he's already, think I had a stroke, what, a while back when he was standing there and he couldn't speak. I mean, maybe he'll just uh, uh, get out on his own for medical reasons. You never know. Uh, anyway, but then, so they were talking that this is Mike Johnson's moment, but uh, you can see the Uniparty. I don't think Johnson will, will be able to, uh, I don't think he's going to vote for the SAVE Act either. And then the other story I just wanted to get on real quick is you know that they've got that commission supposedly looking into Trump's, uh, uh, you know, assassination attempt. In fact, a couple of, uh, of um, representatives went to the, the scene of the crime. If you know, you know if they were serious about doing anything, they'd be questioning the FBI saying, why did you cover up the evidence? Why did you cremate Crook's body? Why did you wash the blood off within a couple of two days? Why did you take down the bleachers before we could do a forensics examination? Why haven't you questioned the police and given us all the body cam footage of uh, what really took place that day and how crooks could get up on the roof without, a, you know, 50 cops surrounding the building that didn't see a damn thing? You know, these are the things that if they were serious about looking into it, they'd be doing. So they're just giving it lip service. I hope you understand that. It's just like the... Poor Kennedy. I mean, the Warren Commission was the same thing back when Kennedy was assassinated. That was a huge cover-up. So, uh, and then Trump has said when he gets in there that he's going to release. But the thing is, I, I, I can't believe there's anything left to release around the Kennedy assassination. I mean, you know that as corrupt as the government is, all that stuff's probably been destroyed. I don't think it's in an archive anywhere. So what's there to release? Just like with the, the Trump assassination. There's nothing to release. They, they've, they've whitewashed all the evidence. So anyway, just wanted to show you the Uniparty at work in your government pretending to do things that I hopefully you're not stupid enough to think that they're actually doing an investigation. Just saying. Well, I may have been wrong. <laughs> There's thunder all around me. So that's why I got this umbrella on my back. And usually when, when you get hit by a thunderstorm here, when you're out hiking like this, it's vicious, man. Uh, it just depends on how hard that wind's blowing, but usually all I can do is hold up behind a tree, and sometimes you got to wait about a half an hour for it to blow through. Because, I mean, trying to move when it's when the wind's blowing and that rain's coming down. Anyway, I forgot about this story. Uh, I, I knew that Elon was talking about he was going to be a... You hear that thunder? I knew he said he was going to be a taxi service. I didn't realize there's two astronauts stranded on the space station right now. Uh, did you know that? I, I, I tell you, I try to keep an ear to the news. Uh, since Kamala heads up the, uh, the Space Commission or whatever it is her job is, I guess that's her responsibility. But I guess Elon's working on getting them down. You know, one thing, I don't want to gross you out here. <laughs> but I don't know, it was just a thought in my head. How in the hell do you go to the bathroom in space in zero, zero G? You know, think about it, man. That, 
if you messed up, that little turd could be just floating all around the space station. <laughs> I mean, or, or even the pee. I mean, think about the pee. I mean, I guess they have to put some, especially for the, the women and the men. I mean, I, I guess it must be some sort of device that you have to stick on there. <laughs> I know I shouldn't be talking about this, but it just hit me in the head and I was like, how in the world do they go to the bathroom in space, man, when I heard about this story about the two astronauts. So anyway, that's that story. Well, I guess the other men proved me wrong today. I wanted to show you I'm holed up under a tree. Can't hike in that. This is just the beginning. It's going to get a lot crazier. Let's look down the other way. Yeah. Wow. This is why I bring the umbrella. You know, it's, it's one thing to be under an umbrella just by a tree. It's not that big a deal. I mean, you just gotta wait it out. You can see the sky up there. It's, this could last 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe just 10 minutes. But uh, I just like, uh, I, I hate being a drowned rat, man. I hate being a drowned rat. Man, I'm really in it. <laughs> that lightning bolt hit pretty close by just a minute ago. I was hoping to get some of the thunder here on the video. Holy shit! Kind of trying to move along. Ooh, thank God for this umbrella. Of course, it's it's a lightning magnet. If you if you uh, if if I catch it on the video, you know, and I'm a smoking ruin of a of flesh on this uh, path. Uh, just say uh, you know you you at least saw the video. Boy, you hear that one? That hit. <laughs> that hit right over here, man. Woo! Holy shit! I wish I could have gotten it on the video, but I can't hold the camera up. I tell you what, trying to hold an umbrella and the camera at the same time, my arms are getting tired. Woo! Oh man, I'm gonna be just a smoking critter here before too long. Man, I don't know what's going on. It won't blow over. I like a, it's like I'm parked in the heart of a thunderstorm. I'm telling you, I've been hiking at least a mile or two. Well, we'll see what we're coming up on. See, I got 1.5 miles to go. And this thing ain't lit up, man. Good God. Oh, shit. Hear that one? God dang. I've never been in a storm like this. I mean, when you're on a golf course, normally we just hold up and it's over in about 10 minutes. Good God almighty. Weather forecast just came across on the radio. A slight chance of scattered showers and possibly thunderstorms. You think? Uh, can you hear that? That one hit right up back, back there. Holy moly. Whew. That's parked right over top of me, man. It just won't let me go. Anyway, I was trying to get that thunder, but look at this. That wasn't there on the way out. Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Whew. That's, uh, I don't know if you've ever been in the forest. Dad. Every now and then, man, I've had some big limbs come down pretty close to me. And uh, luckily, obviously, I've never had one drop on top of me, but maybe someday. Well, as you can see, I'm just about out of the storm, but I did want to talk about, well, a cybersecurity topic. Imagine that cybersecurity guy talking about a cybersecurity topic. So I... I I did a uh, video yesterday on Pavlov, uh, the guy that uh, owns uh, tele, uh, Telegram, and uh, you know, and he's been arrested in France and could go to jail for 20 years uh, if they if they pass it. But really, uh, I don't remember who it was. It might have been Kim.com. Anyway, he was pointing out that it's it, and they were saying that and his co-conspirators. So that means that uh, all the other people that uh, manage that company are on the chopping list uh, if they can get a hold of them. And so really what they want, and this is uh, getting back to Zuckerberg as a matter of fact. Okay, what they want are the private keys. Uh, if you have never uh, done encryption, you know, you have a set of public keys and you have a set of private keys. And uh, what they want are the private keys to Telegram. And if they give them up, that means that any all of the private conversations that are on Telegram will uh, be available to the government. So that they'll, they'll load it into a... NSA database and they can search through all those conversations. So if you are on Telegram, be sure you're deleting everything that you can right now. Okay, because uh, I have a feeling they will give up 
those private keys, just like Zuckerberg did. You know, a lot of people had private accounts or private conversations on Facebook before Zuckerberg gave up the private keys. And so then all of that, all those conversations, all those accounts, everything on Facebook became available to the NSA and was loaded into an NSA database. So, uh, so that's the big danger there. Uh, the good thing about X is uh, I don't know of anything that's encrypted on it, <laughs> but, which is good and bad. I mean, you know, that means everything we're posting is going into an NSA database uh, on X, you know. So, like uh, the Canadian prepper says, uh, eventually they're going to use that to arrest all of us because uh, I guess we're the, we're the dissenting. You can see I still hear the thunder. <laughs> Thunder and lightning, very, very frightening. Galileo, 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 wicked Thor. Oh man, I tell you, I, I'd always tried to karaoke that song. That was fun, fun song to karaoke. Uh, anyway, so I did want to just hit on that cybersecurity topic because uh, I do believe we're we're seeing the end of uh, the seek or the uh, the ability to encrypt uh, uh, conversations on Telegram. And uh, that's you know, that, and I want to get back into another story. I forgot about this one. I was going to include this. So a long time ago, there was an encrypted email uh, service called LavaBit. Uh, some of you may be familiar with it. I think he resurrected it. It might be back. But anyway, so the uh, and it, and the, obviously the government didn't have access to all of those encrypted uh, conversations, and so they went after the guy. The FBI raided his house and everything, and they said. Uh, you know, they put him under court order to give up the private keys so that they could get access to all of that uh, that email. And uh, rather than give up the keys, he just nuked the whole thing. He, he deleted everybody's email. A lot of people <laughs> were pissed as hell because they lost all their email. But, it, you know, the choice was, was to give up the private keys and give all of their, their, their conversations to the government or just delete everything. And I respect his decision, the lava bit guy, to uh, just delete everything, uh, even though I'm sure that, you know a lot of people. I mean, think about it, if you had your Gmail account nuked, would it really affect you all that much? It wouldn't affect me at all. <laughs> I, I get so much spam at Gmail. I, I tried. To, of course, you know, I'd have to go change my email address at, <clears throat> at various institutions where I use that as my primary email. But other than that, I mean, you know, that's that'd be the only thing that I'd have to do. Anyway, I just wanted to tell those stories so. I mean, it's a terrible what they're doing to the Telegram. You know, the only the only encrypted service that's around, and uh, I have a feeling they're going to have to cave in. I mean, would, if you had an encrypted service, a messaging service, and your choice was go to jail for the rest of your life or give up the private keys, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I don't know. I mean, if, if you look at what they did to Julian Assange. I mean, that's horrible. They, I have a feeling he's, he, I mean, we haven't heard anything from him for a long time, but, you know, when you're in solitary confinement for as long as he was, I, I assume his mental uh, faculties aren't all there anymore. Uh, I mean, he's permanently damaged because of that ordeal. So, anyway. All right. Just wanted to throw that out.